Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio. Well, I can guarantee this is going to be a two-parter. So this is part one. Our little hand-painted raven in there. And then, and then, we're using an image. So here we are doing all sorts of fun, new, innovative things, right? We are doing double doors, which are not as intimidating as they look. We are um, using a lot of transfers underneath of here. I mean, look at the paper. Um, you can still see, where is it? You can still see the, the, the Chinese characters underneath of them. There we go. So we really kept those layers transparent. Uh, we used our Arteza watercolor brushes to kind of uh, color those. We um, made wavy doors. We used copper foil and aluminum duct tape. D-U-C-T, duct tape. So um, we painted this guy. We used a vintage photo for this one. <laughs> I love how this turned out. Um, so I started out with Citrusolve pages underneath of these. Obviously, this decided to take its own route. I love the route that it took. Oh, this guy still needs to dry. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue underneath of there. Don't know why that thing does not wanna stay, but we gotta put a little bit more uh, E6000 under it and then just let it dry. It's probably because I've messed with it a little bit too much. You might recognize this from our 30 times three tile. It's like, you know, that was such a cool pattern. I could have done more of that, but I really loved the way that both the copper and the aluminum tape were working with each other. So I just did strips of them. And then I put the black gesso over the top um, and did the embossing over here. So there's a lot of different techniques happening in this one layout. And I think it was cool how it worked out. I think I probably took about six hours total on this. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit less. Probably about six hours, I think. It took most of yesterday. Um, and that was, you know, figuring out what to do with it. So you guys don't have to sit there and figure out what to do with it, at least. It gives you a little bit of a heads up if you want to try something like this. Um, the, the tape was simple once I figured out the process. Um, be a little bit careful. I did cut myself off of the aluminum tape. It's, it's, um, the one that I have is, uh, pretty industrial. And I'll go ahead and put links for the copper tape and the aluminum tape down in the Amazon links. I will put the latches down in the links. I was going to put hinges on it. You might see me trying to put hinges on it in the video. The hinges uh, didn't, the glue didn't stick, uh, probably similar to what's happening down here. And um, so I kind of abandoned that uh, thought of using the hinges. They weren't necessary to the piece whatsoever, honestly. So it wasn't, it wasn't worth the hassle that they were giving me. Um, and I kind of like the seamlessness. This was uh, a piece that evolved over time. Um, it was not a simple, just, I didn't, I didn't know what it was going to become. And, um, you know, those citrus off pages don't, you know, don't waste your citrus off pages on the project. Um, unless you want to, but it's just a base layer and we put the tape right over the top. So, I wouldn't even put a base layer on this. I would just start taping the aluminum and copper tape in strips. So that alone would have saved me half an hour. Um, so there's the project. I just glued that back down while we were talking. Sorry, I'm a little I'm tired, a little distracted. So there you go. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. I hope you enjoy the videos and there will be a part two to this for sure. Okay, bye-bye. Hi, Patreons. 
You guys rock. I love you. This, I need to always tell you that because I truly do appreciate you being here with me so very, very much. So this will be a fun page. Um, this is Patreon's first creating your first altered book. And we are going to do something along this line. Now, this might be a little advanced for creating your first altered book, but I have confidence that you guys are able to handle it. It's not nearly as scary or intimidating as it looks, but I can guarantee you it will turn out as cool as you can make it. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, basically that's, you never know what's lying underneath. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys, that was my intention with them, is like, whoa, they're a little freaky. They don't look very freaky, but they're a little freaky behind closed doors. <laughs> that was truly what I was putting them together. It's like, hmm, how can I find the biggest opposites? So that was fun. That was, I did love making that. And, um... I don't think I had really seen anybody do anything similar to it. And then if you check out my second altered book, which I'll put a link for that, um, I did the O'Keefe pages. Um, and that's in the uh, second altered book playlist. So there's, I think, 10 videos for it that are at least an hour long. It was very in-depth process. Like, oh my God, it was so much work. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. For this one we might do something like that in masterclass we don't know but not in our creating your first altered book because we want to try to keep this um, simple and easy and accessible for everybody but not like the O'Keefe pages were everybody can do all of this I have the utmost confidence that you can do it okay so we're gonna jump down to the book and um, I'm gonna show you what we're doing Yay! Alright, we'll chat soon. Okay, so this one here, I can't really put a hinge on it because of this, right? Because we don't want to mess up the queen at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a cut here and we're going to start it inwards like this one did. Uh, right here. See how it starts in kind of the center page? That's where we're gonna go with that. So that way we don't interrupt the queen. Mm -hmm. Don't wanna tick off the queen of hearts, man. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I have citrus olive pages down here. All right, I've pulled out my handy dandy T-square because it's an awesome tool and um, we want to have straight lines. Why do we need to have straight lines? Well, because we're not kindergartners. And it's not that hard to have a straight line. It just isn't that hard. Uh, if, if you think it's hard to make a straight line, then um, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just crazy. Okay, I think I like that. What I'm gonna do is, um, What am I gonna do? Um, I'm gonna cut that away from there carefully. I could use my X-Acto on it. I think I'm just gonna use the scissors because it's just as easy, um, especially when you have a nice straight line to follow. So that is what I'm going to do next. And we'll come back. Okay, now that we have that cut, I think our fabric tack Tack will work just fine to glue it onto the page. Yeah, come on, buddy. I've already gone through this fabric tack. It was a busy art month last month, though, or the month of July. Oh my gosh, we did a lot of really cool, awesome art. So much fun. We're going to keep it up in August. We are going to keep pushing ourselves. Oops. And we really want to make sure that that 
makes sense like that. So the, the reason why I'm pulling it up is because we're going to butt this page, you know, up to this guy. We want to make sure we have enough space, but we want to make sure it's lined up properly. And in fact, we're going to kind of squish that around just a little bit more. It's already starting to stick well. See how I have a little bit? When you go up to here, that goes away. So actually, we want to make sure that when the book is this way, we have enough space that everything... Yeah, see how much that pushes the difference? It does. That's why we're testing it. We want to make sure that it sits right at the beginning. Okay? It's not hard. It takes a couple extra seconds. So there is that space. But when you close it, that space goes away. See? Be aware of that. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. Be right back. All right. So I was just kind of looking at this, and I decided I wanted to put some fun ephemera down right in there. And it's a little bit wide. That means strength. That N is strength. Steeter. Yeah. I know because it's my word of strength. Tomorrow's a new day of strength. Elskit, you are loved. Elskit, have strength, you are loved. In case you were wondering, it's Norwegian. which my name is Norwegian in origin. Um, I'm a quarter Norwegian and three quarters German, but when I did my ancestry, I was actually a lot English. But um, part of that is because my Norwegian ancestors uh, invaded England, I believe around 800. So, um, that is why I have a lot of, uh, this one's a really thick page, and I'm cutting it up and it's not going to work. Northumbria, uh, I have some Czechoslovakian, I know that. Prussian, I know that my great, 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 great grandmother came from Prussia, which is now, I believe, the Czech Republic. Not positive. I don't know which ones still exist and which ones don't. Now, why am I doing it this way when it's just the base layer? Well, because I decided I wanted this pattern. I am actually using this as like a wallpaper pattern instead of doing the real, um, um, uh, let's see, we can pull off that top one and pull off that bottom line. The reason why I, I am doing it this way is because I just thought it was, would be interesting. And that's pretty darn interesting, I think, for a background. Now I am going to put it on the back of the door here also. Because this will open it up. So once that door opens, I want it to be cool also. And why am I doing it while it's still in the book and still in one piece? Because I think it'll be easier to do it that way. I don't know if it will be, but I think it's a good theory. <laughs> it's my universe. If you can think of a better way to do it, go for it. Because it's your universe in your world. Now I'm going to make sure that this is right side up. Where's my little N? No N. I think this is the right side up here. That's cool. That is cool. And this paper is super nice to use as ephemera. Oh my gosh, it just melted into there. Wow. I've been giving this paper away. I don't know if I should have been doing that. <laughs> it's probably not the best choice. 
It's part of your thank you gifts. All right, we're gonna pull off some of that. Pull off some of that. I'm gonna finish this up, guys, and we'll be right back. Okay, next what we're gonna do, I have some of this Tim Holtz Ideology collage paper, which I find to be incredibly beautiful. Um, and I'm gonna put that layer over the top of the uh, Chinese paper, or whatever language that is. Asian paper, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's Chinese. I have no idea what that book was even about. Hopefully it wasn't something like, you know, Kama Sutra in, <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have a really cool, um, I think it's Russian, but I don't know, but I don't know what the book is, so I'm afraid to use it as ephemera because I don't want to offend anybody, you know. It, it could be the Bible for all I know, which would be unusual. Um, it is really pretty lettering, though. All right, I'm getting too wrinkled. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. No! Dang it, stop it. I should have cut it off before putting it down. You old buttholio. Okay. <laughs> Just redo it. That ain't big deal. It's annoying though, dang it. And I do want to see if I can make that just even a little bit more transparent, so we're going to add a little bit more Mod Podge over the top of it. Of course, this is drying as I'm doing that, so I probably shouldn't be doing it like this. Look at how beautiful those layers are though. Oh, I was going to do something different under there, but oh. That is the bomb. Alright, I don't want to have the same pattern on both sides. So I'm going to cut off that. I love that daisy. love that poppy. There's no poppy on it. My, oh, I just had to turn on the air conditioner because it started to get boiling hot in here. The house goes from cold to hot, like in two seconds flat. So when I wake up, I'm wearing my flannel nightgown or uh, bathrobe and my slippers and sweatshirts. And then by one or two o'clock, it's so hot. Now it's gonna be so pretty. I mean, how's that for the inside of something? Okay, we're gonna let that dry. That. Wow. So if we put something transparent over the top of that, such as uh, gelatos or distressed crayons, we're gonna make something really beautiful. And the question is, what do we wanna have as a focal that's gonna be behind the doors? Now, obviously we're not gonna have something that's uh, really is shocking or you know do however you want to do guys this would be the perfect place for you to really use your imagination and, and figure out what you want to have behind your doors um, you know do I want to try to preserve that front a little bit more and um, you know keep a little bit of that um, let's see where's my exacto here does this have to be exact when you cut it off? No, but you know, you probably want it to be nice. You know, you want to make a nice edge. Of course, you can always go back and trim later, which I do usually do. But I also like to see where I'm at with things. So that's why I kind of keep it trimmed up as I go along. Yeah, that just didn't work right there, did it? It's going to be hidden, though. That will be truly hidden. Okay, come on, booger. Booga booga booga. Booga booga booga. Booga booga booga. I'm gonna make sure that's glued down. Got it. Okay. 
I'm going to let that dry and do the same thing over here. That's so pretty. Cool, huh? Layers. They rock. I still have to wait for that to dry. I'm like tempted to just go in and start coloring because, because I want to see what it's going to do. And so I'm going to grab some of my favorite colors of Distress Crayons. Mermaid Lagoon. Uh, what was this one again? Seedless Preserves. Kind of one of my favorite because it really does um, have a really beautiful color to it. So we're going to pull this in here. I'm going to pull some of this in here. Highlights, opposites. It'll create a nice brown when they're together. Remember that. And we're going to pull some of this guy in. Uh, that one is a mustard seed. This one is lucky clover. Ooh. We're going to see about that. And let's see what happens when we add just a touch of water to it here. a little sticky from the glue. Now this is kind of using this in more of a watercolor application. All right, so what I want to do here, you see how I picked up other colors and they're mixing together. Let's go ahead and do the purple first. And we'll start to pull that green in. We're not going into the yellow yet. See, when it mixes, kind of get that brown color, which I'm okay with that. That is understandable. Remember I said I'm using opposite colors. I know what my colors are going to do. That's beautiful. Let's add in a little bit more blue. So the Seedless Preserve is a very nice dominant color, meaning it comes to the forefront. It uh, does gorgeous stuff. All right, let's put some sunshine down the middle, see what we can get here. Now, I don't really want to pull into those other colors too much. A little bit, yes. A lot, no. We're not going to take our dirty finger there. We're going to take our clean one. We're going to dip it in a little bit of water here. It does help the Distress Crayon to move. It is water soluble for a while. I believe that it does lose its water solubility. <laughs> Say that word 20 times real fast. All right, now I'm going to pull it into that blue. If I pull it into that brown or that purple, it will make a brown. It'll make a very beautiful brown, but it will make brown. All I'm thinking about here is a variety of color. So if you do not have the exact same colors that I do, that's okay. Use whatever colors you have. You could use, now watercolor you could use, but well, be careful when you add too much water to something, right? Um, and this is just our bottom layer still. I don't know if it's gonna stay like this. I don't even know what I'm gonna put in here in the center. And that's probably not a good thing because I'm coloring without having a plan. But it was just too pretty to leave it like that. Um, okay. So I'm looking at the next color that I want to add, and you know, I'm not going to add something like that 
to this beautiful color. And the reason why is I don't want it to look like mud. I am, however, going to add this bronze to it because I know what this bronze does. I'm familiar with my products. I know where it's gonna go. It is not nearly as um, translucent as the other colors. It's more opaque, so you don't see through it as much, but it will pick up the colors that are underneath of it, and it's gonna give us a luminosity. Ooh, one of my favorite words, luminosity. This bronze does play nicely with others. It's taking down all those different colors very, very well um, without having to go to, to, to poop brown. Um, we have now taken it to a really shimmery, shiny, a beautiful, is it too? It might be a little too. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. This was the other thought that I was gonna do, but I think that this is too thick of paint, right? And so I like this a little bit better. I am gonna take off some of that bronze. I think it got a little heavy. So if I don't like how something goes, I remove it. There's no fear here, especially when we're using distress crayons. They are water soluble. Now, I have heard somewhere that they do set, but I don't know how well they truly do set in the long run. I haven't had any issues with them because I generally go over it with Mod Podge. Now that's, that's better. Right? So if you're not loving something, you're not stuck with it. Now it still has some paint back there. That's, that's cool. A lot of depth in there. All right, that is really pretty. I know I'm taking up a lot of the color right now. I'm just fine tuning it, um, making it look dirty, purposely making it look dirty. Okay, you want it to feel like it's been on the walls forever. It's a stark difference, isn't it? So with this one, we're just going to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. Let's start out with the brown. This is behind our doors, and we're going to pull in some of this orange. And we're going to pull in some of the red right there. Pink. I didn't use that color over here. I don't know if it's the right thing to use in this layout or not, honestly, guys. Uh, a lot of times they work great, but I usually don't uh, put my fingers in the water either make them smear around and I generally put a layer of Mod Podge over the top of them and maybe I'll still do that I don't know all right the second time went a lot easier do it like I did the second time <laughs> not the first Actually, let's check out something here real fast. Yeah, Mod Podge with Distress Products. It just works. That's beautiful.
the less worked side is much better. I just kept having to adjust the colors there to get it to do what I wanted it to do. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. That was a lot of a fight, but uh, I think the end result is really quite pretty. I dig that. I really truly do. Okay, okay. So I gotta admit to you guys that this one took far too long to do. I struggled with it way too much. So we're gonna see if we can do this one faster, easier, bigger, better, stronger. Not like that. Oh, darn it, I did that the other time. Let's do this. There. Well, that's pretty perfect. I'm gonna cut that off. Cat balloon, cat balloon. I call it cat balloon. God, I used to love that show. I loved the old westerns like that. Paint your wagon. That was a good one. I never really got into like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, they were just a little too, mm, I don't know. Masculine, maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. It just didn't appeal to my... And I loved westerns. That was, that was my favorite genre. No, that's beautiful. It does have a difference from there. We were able to preserve that yellow, which is good. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that guy sticks down there. Before I do anything to those fronts, I'm gonna repair that or reinforce that. Remember this has fabric in it. So it's just good to continually reinforce your book. The colors work great though with the rest of it, doesn't it? It'll still get adjusted. This won't be our end. Okay, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, artists. I don't really have too much time to work on this this morning. I need to get uh, three videos edited. But I was just sitting here playing with this and I was cutting up, cutting up, cleaning up the edges. I do like how this has turned out. You know, it, it took me a little bit of time for it to grow on me, but we will be doing more to this. Don't think that we're, we're done here. Um, still have to figure out what type of images I wanna have inside the door. That's difficult, but uh, we are doing a double door. And I am going to just kind of do a swishy, swirly type of door, like you saw with the other one. Oh, it's always scary. It is always scary to do this. Let's just cut through the center of your page. Okay. There we go. So the door will open like that. Ta-da! And then we are going to take this same mm, pattern, all right? That's that, wait, is that right? Wait, I want the opposite. There's that. And then if I have, oh, yeah. If I have this here like that, then that will give me that same shape repeated, which is what I'm looking for. I'm gonna do it right about there. So that will give me a repetition of form, creating rhythm, right? And you won't even know that it's there, but it will be. Um, we're gonna just go ahead and mark that line right there. I don't know how long that paint is gonna hang out on my fingers, but it just doesn't really wanna come off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Art supplies. 
right. Well, then I'm like, oh god, I hope I'm going through the right amount of pages. All right. So see how we have that repetition there? So then when you open it, when you open this way, the door's that way, and the door's that way, we have kind of a cool pattern. So anyway, I'm going to have to figure out, I think I'll grab out my hinges, and then I also have these little door pieces. Uh, I think that would work out pretty cool, just to glue those puppies down. I'm not sure how I'm going to make this be the most stable, but we're going to play with it and see what we can do. All right, guys, we will chat soon. Bye. Okay. So now that I have all these pieces and parts, I'm trying to uh, prop this up a little bit so that I can see it better. Um, so we kind of have a little bit of an issue here with figuring out a couple different things. The first one being how to best connect these to the outer pages. And I do like to use gaffer's tape. Um, so we're going to play with that, but we're also, we're not going to leave it just as a black tape. I think that that's uh, not very uh, exciting. And we want exciting and interesting. So we're going to line that up somewhat straight, hopefully. And then we're going to line this up here. Now, the way this book is acting, I want to make sure that I'm giving it enough space to open and close okay. So when it's laying down flat, that it will close evenly without having to push it back open. So that means that we are expanding that like a quarter or eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch probably, over. You see how nicely that opens there. I think we'll do one on the back side also. I think that's working out okay. Um, where is it? <laughs> Where'd it go? Uh, you guys know I use a lot of gaffer's tape in my um, circus book. I think it's a good tape to use. I think it's far superior than uh, black masking tape, which I have zero love for. And gaffer's tape uh, can accept more mediums, honestly. I do think it, it sticks better, although they do have it does have a little bit of a sticking issue. And no, I'm not a fan of just a big piece of black tape right there. Um, but we still have to design the outside here, and we'll still have more stuff done to the inside. If you can make a really good seal in there, uh, it's a good thing. Try not to put your nail through the tape, but the better seal you have, the better your book will act, right? So, God, I hate to just put strips of black in here. But we're gonna do it. Maybe we're gonna just do it on the inside.
I'm not gonna let it be there if it's not straight. This is where craftsmanship comes in, guys. It is okay, and it is okay to be picky about your artwork. It is okay. It's your artwork. It's going to have your name on it, you know? These people out there who, 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 you know, most artists out there on YouTube, though, they do promote really beautiful craftsmanship. Um, I was just thinking of, like, Tracy Fox. Nick the Booksmith, um, uh, CC's uh, Creations by CC. These are all artists that uh, on YouTube that do really beautiful craftsmanship. So I would encourage you to find people who take pride in their work um, and who do talk to you about having pride in your work, even though they're not necessarily saying it uh, in those terms. They're showing you it, and um, you know I I love that. I love it when artists tell people how to do things well instead of how to do things halfway. All right, uh, I've changed my mind with this, and I'm gonna pull this one off on the maybe yes on the outside. I'm gonna leave the inside one because I need the stability. I think I, I'm, I'm working through this as I'm doing it. So, um, you know, forgive me for indecision. I've got these bigger hinges, which I have not used at all. So uh, let's, before we put these down, let's look at our options. I do like, oh, that's perfect, isn't it? Okay. So, I'm looking at strengthening these doors and having something in there that's a great design element. So let's go ahead and use this. I'm giving it a little crumple first before I pull the tape off. We're gonna see if that's easier. Might not be easier. No, it was easier. So when we give our tape texture before we put it down, it's gonna be much more interesting. Yes, 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 it will. Again, it takes two seconds to try to line it up halfway well. Now this metal tape does get brittle, so that's why we can't just stick it with the metal tape. Now, you, you notice that this is a little off right there. I'm fine with that, because that's part of the tape texture. If I put my finger down that seam, it will break that tape. Okay, so we're gonna pull off the excess here. We can cut it off, we can fold it under, but I don't want it to be on this page. All right, now, I love using these uh, tape elements in the book. I think they really do give some great uh, design. So uh, let's go ahead and fortify this little seam up here. Did I ever put the fabric in there? I think I was gonna put fabric in there, wasn't I? Do I need it? I think we're doing pretty good that way. So let's go ahead and put a bit more copper. Let's put the silver tape in the center. This is the aluminum duct tape. Tape plus. Where I got this one from. Oh, come on, don't be so mean. Uh, this is you know brand new, so just a second. 